Let me read to you a passage from the 14th chapter of St. John's Gospel, verses 1 to 6. It's the Gospel for Friday of the fourth week in Eastertide. St. John writes, Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's from John chapter 14, 1 to 6. It speaks of the afterlife. What do I mean? Well, you know, I vividly remember watching the Australian movie decades ago called Jeddah. It was produced in 1955. It was the first to star two Aboriginal actors in the leading roles, and also the first Australian film, I think, shot in colour. Jeddah is an Aboriginal girl born on a cattle station in the Northern Territory of Australia. She is raised learning European ways and separated from other Aborigines. She wants to learn about her own culture, but is forbidden. The Aboriginal man, Marbuck, eventually abducts her and his tribal council sings his death song for bringing Jeddah to them. It is forbidden. He goes insane because of the thought of the death song. And the final scene, so memorable, shows him pulling Jeddah with him as he falls back off the cliff to their deaths. What I also found memorable was the final script following Jeddah's death. Joe, the half-caste Aborigine who is in love with Jeddah and who tracks Marbuck and Jeddah for several days to their horrifying end, speaks of Jeddah's departed spirit. Jeddah has joined the great mother of the world in the dreaming time of tomorrow. It was a powerful end to a striking movie, and the afterlife for Jeddah is that envisaged by traditional Aboriginal culture, at least as the script writers were advised it to be. There has been across the ages a great variety of understandings of the afterlife in culture and in religion. Some cultures have advanced conceptions involving a form of judgment with its consequences. I think here of classical, classical Egyptian religion, however debased it was in other respects. Other cultures have had the most meagre of notions of an afterlife. Even revealed religion prior to Jesus Christ did not have a special strength in this particular respect. Its notion of the one and only God who was bridegroom of his people was extraordinary when set against the religious world of its time but there was not a lot on the afterlife. The case was altogether different with Jesus Christ. Apart from all that he revealed about the one God in three persons, three divine persons, and about the, the atonement brought about by the triune God, he also revealed with striking clarity the truth of the divine judgment, both general and particular, and heaven and hell. The afterlife suddenly became, with Jesus Christ, a major dogma of revealed religion. So important is Christian dogma, Christian doctrine, on the afterlife, that for the last two centuries at least, its dogma on hell has been a major stumbling block for many. Cardinal Newman acknowledged this and worked to alleviate the impact on the modern imagination of this dogma. He suggested ways of understanding the eternity of hell 
that alleviated somewhat the thought of its unending and total misery and he did this to clear away obstacles to belief that can beset the modern mind. Apart from this, the modern Western mind tends to be agnostic, bordering on one or other form of atheism. There is no supernatural. This world is all that there is. This has been the advancing assumption. And I have known elderly people, the typical neighbour as it were, who have thought that at the end of life there will be nothing further for them. Just as any animal, the pet dog or cat, finishes its existence at death, so does man. He is buried, and all that is left for his self is what is lowered into the grave. All that is left of his self. Just before John Henry Newman was beatified by Pope Benedict XVI in England, in September of 2010, his coffin was exhumed with a view to placing his relics in the Oratory Church of Birmingham where he had lived. Well, all his bodily remains were discovered to have gone because of the dampness of the cemetery. His spirit, of course, lives with Christ in heaven. But for the agnostic or atheist, this life is all that there definitely is. And when the body goes, everything goes. Talk of the afterlife is mere fanciful conjecture. But no, we have it on the word of Jesus Christ, confirmed by the powerful tradition of his church, that there is a judgment, and then heaven or hell. Well, all this brings us to our gospel today that I read earlier from John chapter 14 verses 1 to 6, in which our Lord speaks so wonderfully of heaven. There is nowhere, nowhere in the scriptures prior to Jesus Christ any teaching so exalted as is his teaching on heaven. In my father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Every day of our lives we have something wonderful to look forward to. It is our everlasting homeland of heaven. The great rosary crusader of the second half of the 20th century, Irish priest Father Patrick Payton, once said that he was looking forward to death. He was a man full of peace, joy and kindness. The reason why he was looking forward to death was not because he was suffering so much and looked forward to a release from it. He was looking forward to heaven and death was the door to heaven. Heaven of course is our meeting with and living together with forever Jesus Christ. Father Peyton longed to see the face of Jesus Christ. This alters everything about death from being a dark black hole into which we must fall, it becomes a door suffused with light. Heaven. Let us never lose sight of it. It will fill all our days with music. Music that lasts forever. <laughs>